allergic to my own progesterone. You guys, I can't wait to share with you what I found just now. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You guys, 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 you guys guess what? I um, am not always the most planned out person who comes up with a list of all the stuff I'm going to talk about every day on my YouTube channel. Normally what I do is I finish up my morning calls and I take a little break and I go, what do I want to talk about today? And then I talk about it. So I did say this week that I would be talking about what causes skin flushing. And so I kind of boxed myself in to research and all the things, which is not bad. I'm, I'm actually happy that I'm doing research because... It's making me discover all kinds of new things. And you may have already done all this research and been like, well, freaking duh. But here's the thing about me. I'm not a big researcher. I'm not a person who spends a lot of time behind the scenes digging around trying to figure things out. I'm very experiential. And so I just normally like to talk about my own experiences. And then if you relate, you relate. And that's how I do things. But not today. Not this week. Not with this YouTube channel. I've been doing more research because I realize Everybody wants this purposeful life where they're helping other people. And I really just set out on my own journey to find out why the heck am I skin flushing and why do I feel the way I feel all the time? And then I just decided I would talk about it as I do it because number one, I freaking don't like to be seen when I'm skin flushing because in my mind, I created a story in my mind that that's shown as a sign of weakness and it's not, uh, it, it makes you feel insecure and blah, blah, blah. So I did all this so that I could start talking about it, exposing myself to it because I know that exposure therapy is where it's at. I know that the more you confront something, face it, overcome it, and the more you realize you didn't die, that your brain starts to comprehend, you're all right. You're all right. And a lot of times you will overcome whatever said issue is. Since I started this channel, my skin flushing has not gone away 100%, but it definitely has reduced by making small changes. The biggest one is that I stopped taking my birth control pill. And guess what, you guys? I talked yesterday about estrogen and skin flushing, and I was like, it's estrogen, it's an overload of estrogen in my body, and it makes so much sense because estrogen fluctuates throughout the cycle, and when the cycle, when the estrogen is high, then the flushing is heavy, and when the estrogen is low, the flushing is not as bad. So I was out here researching about estrogen. Oh. What does estrogen do and how does my body because you know i think we all watched that video in eighth grade at school where they talked about our period and pubic hair and all those things and everybody was trying not to giggle the whole time but then you were like actually really interested and you were like i kind of want to take notes but i don't want anybody to make fun of me um and so they should show us that video again when we were older but guess what we have now we have youtube we have all these other things where we can learn about the reproductive system and our menstrual cycle um if you knew all about your menstrual menstrual cycle kudos to you because I didn't give a damn. I just knew, am I gonna wear a pad or a tampon? And how the heck do I get a tampon in? TMI, that, that's, anyway. So I was out here looking at estrogen and looking at what happens when there's too much estrogen in the body, how that affects the adrenal glands and how the adrenal glands release cortisol and how I'm thinking like I'm having this allergic reaction to estrogen, cortisol, whatever that is in the system that then creates histamine and then my body's like, mm, histamine. And then flush, 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 flush. Anxiety, anxiety, insomnia, insomnia. But you guys, so I pulled up, it had like a suggested search and I hit progesterone because progesterone is the other female um, sex hormone that we have in our body, estrogen, progesterone. And the first thing I looked up was progesterone. I'm, I'm looking here because my the, the computer's here. Uh, progesterone hypersensitivity can have a variety of different symptoms, all although most, if not all, include skin rashes, such as eczema, hives, and flushing. What? So maybe it's not estrogen, maybe it's progesterone. And the other thing about progesterone is that, you know, it changes also throughout uh, your your monthly cycle. But the thing is too, is that men have progesterone too. It is a precursor to their testosterone. So when I talk to guys on here or people who have reached out to me to let me know that they're a guy, you know, and they're having some skin flushing too. <sighs> progesterone. 
progesterone. And on the birth control pill, you have the estrogen and the progesterone inside of that pill, uh, helping to assist you throughout your monthly cycle and not have a freaking baby. So this is all very interesting. I remember when I came off the birth control pill and I was talking to my functional neurologist and he said to me, it may take a while for this, these synthetic hormones to get out of your body. Now that was back, I think towards the end of November, 2019, that I came off of that pill. November, December, January, February, March. It's April right now, so five months. Um, so yeah, I think he's like six months to a year. He said it can take a while. You have to remember you've been on this for a really long time. But even if your body's naturally creating estrogen and progesterone, which it, it should be, um, there still could be a reaction to that. Then I found this other uh, article it's from March 30th, 2006, and it says, evidence of estrogen and progesterone hormone allergy is discovered. 2006, y'all. In Austin, Texas, some women with menstrual cycle disorders like asthma and migraine headaches may be experiencing allergies to their own estrogen and progesterone hormones. Texas researchers have discovered. And then it goes on to say, hold on, I'm gonna scroll, and I'll, I'll link um, reference to this article so you can see it. Uh, let's see. Antibodies play a critical role in the immune response and are produced by the body in response to antigens, molecules the body recognizes as foreign. Hormones haven't been implicated in allergic response in the past because it was thought that hormone molecules were too small to create an allergic response. The researchers found that estrogen and progesterone combine with other proteins and that the hormone part of the molecular complex is recognized as an antigen. Dum, dum, dum. We have shown, this is quoted, we have shown that the IgE antibodies, type 1 immediate allergy antibodies, are produced against estrogen and progesterone, says Roby. This opens a whole new area of treatment possibilities. What? Roby says that in the process of the clinical study, it was found that symptoms could be diminished by very low concentrations of progesterone, which serve both as a diagnostic feature and for symptomatic relief when needed. But, 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 wait, what? You're saying that progesterone helps the, wait, what? Roby says that in the process of the clinical study, it was found that symptoms could be diminished, that means go away, right, by very low concentrations of progesterone. Oh, 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 oh very low, very low, which serve both as a diagnostic feature and for symptomatic relief when needed. Am I reading that right? Like saying that like less progesterone? Anyway, my point is that in March of 2006, uh, University of Texas at Austin discovered that our bodies do in fact and can in fact have allergic responses to estrogen and progesterone hormones. So this is why it's important that we do our own research. And when we go see a physician or whoever we want to talk to, holistic, whatever that may be, to talk about this is a real thing. All that to say, progesterone, my friends. What if it's progesterone? So yesterday we talked about estrogen and just you just barely scraped the surface on estrogen. But today I'm telling you about progesterone because, let me go back to it. Be, go back to it here. Progesterone hypersensitivity can have a variety of different symptoms, although most, if not all, include skin rashes. It includes eczema, hives, and skin flushing, hot flashes. Here we are. Here we are. So that's all I'm going to share with you today. I am going to dive into this a little more. I'm really excited, actually, to keep learning about this and just telling you all about it. And then you can go out and just do your own Google searches or YouTube searches and find more information. And you can share it back here if you want to. So if you want to stay along for the journey, please hit the like button. It will share this with other people who are out there who may know stuff that we need to know. Um, and also subscribe as we continue to just unravel this web of crazy skin flushing stuff. Um, and I would love it if you have had your own experience with this or your own, um, uh, what's the word? Your own um, success. That's the word, success. If you had your own success with diminishing skin flushing or did you go down a path where you talked to your doctor about hypersensitivity to progesterone or estrogen, please, please share that with us because... We're all just like over here scratching our heads trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So this actually makes me feel so hopeful and excited to just know when you start to unravel and find out more information. It's just pretty cool. Pretty cool. So anyway, until tomorrow, I'll see you then. Bye. Bye.